And we have two more speakers before we close out. So, the first thing I need to do is apologize. Because the whole hashtag for this thing is relevant. I am relevant. I have a master's degree in all level reading and English. <laughs> but I've had a hard time with that word about 15 times today. So I was trying to rev you up and I just I kept saying relevant, but Lord have mercy, forgive me. But leave here knowing the correct term. So let's all say it together. I am relevant. Okay, so I'm really proud of y'all. Finally, our next speaker is an icon in our community. He's tall and handsome and smart. And he has a passion for the legislative branch of our government. And he spent time, even though he's a Dallas native, spent lots of time in Washington, D.C. And one of the things we love about him the most is he's always given back. And he gives out t through the Peace Corps. Is that yours? Because someone was looking for you. There's someone that says that he borrowed this and might have put it in his car. Oh, no, I didn't borrow it. <laughs> no. I left it here. Back, back to Mike McKay. Mike, you said something. He about is it. younger and so handsome, but sexy and great yeah, 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 yeah. But Mike is taller. So, um, and has worked with the Peace Corps and still works with the Peace Corps. And do you realize that he has someone working with the Peace Corps that's 85 years old? So, ladies and gentlemen, when you are bored and you're feeling lonely, let's sign up for a two-year stint in the Peace Corps. They'll put you to work, baby. Okay, I thought we would welcome Mike McKay to the stage with one big thing. Let's just all say one, two, three, hook em horns. Mike McKay, one, two, three, hook em horns. Okay, Mike McKay, hook em horns. That was pitiful. I think there must be some Aggies in the room. Here you go. Sooners, there you go. I have to say, in all the times I've been introduced, Kay, I've never been tall, handsome, and God bless you. And don't ever change that eye prescription you've got, lady. <laughs> Woo! Man, oh man. Are you going to stand up here by me all day? Get your thing up. <laughs> I think I'd just sit down. I, I don't know what I could say to follow that. <laughs> so, it's been a good day for me. I hope it's been a good day for you. Um, I actually had a, entitled my speech, I'm supposed to talk to you, I'm supposed to have a call to action, I'm supposed to, you know, what do you do, how everybody can help. And I had this amazing speech titled, Mike McKay's Three Amazing Secrets on What to Do. But then, I went to all your sessions and y'all have stolen my thunder. I have nothing amazing to really say. Y'all have been talking about the two or three things that I was going to talk about, but that's not going to make me shut up, and I've got 15 more minutes, so I'm going to talk, but after all. Um, but before we talk about that, let me just say, if you look around this room, you see all kinds of people. You see people in different places in their lives. You see people of different shapes, colors, sizes, correct? All the differences we have, there is one thing that we have in common. We are all aging. We are all getting older. We are older at 1.35 this afternoon than we were when we walked in at 9.30 this morning. The clock is literally ticking on all of us. So the one thing that we have in common, whether whatever end of that spectrum you're on, the beginning, the middle, or a little more toward the end, and Heaven knows when that is. We all are doing the same thing. We're getting older. So the one of the things that I want us to do is kind of embrace that. Are you through? What's that do? It turns your slides. Am I? Oh. Or apparently it doesn't. On apparently the you did it. Okay. Well, <laughs> you'd think we'd rehearse this or something, right? But we oh, didn't. I don't know. Do you want me to touch it? Press that button. To <laughs> Hey. 
Okay, let's try to get back focused, Mike. Focus, focus. <laughs> aging, aging, aging. We're all at various stages on that continuum, wherever you are. But the, the thing that we have in common is it's happening, right? You can fight it, you can challenge it, you can surgery it away, but it's still happening. Aging is universal that we can all, I think, agree is happening to us. So when you think about that, think about what it is that you can do from this, co from this presentation and the summit today, but also what we can do ourselves individually and collectively. Now, before I get into my no longer amazing three steps, because you all have already talked about them, but I'm still going to call them three amazing steps. Um, and for the press, where are you, David? Okay, I want to make sure that since um, Melania had a little trouble earlier this week, <laughs> I'm going to borrow some quotes, but I'm going to give them all uh, attributes. So let's be real clear that Mike McKay is not stealing from Michelle or Joe or whoever. The first one comes from that icon, Barbara Streisand, right? What's wonderful about aging, she says, is the appreciation you gain for the uh, value of life. What's wonderful about aging is the appreciation you gain for the value and the gift of life. Now, another icon of my favorite is Betty White. Yeah, Golden Girls. She says, dreading aging is a waste of a wonderful life. It's not about age, it's about attitude. Can I hear an amen? amen. I'm a recovering Southern Baptist, so every once in a while I gotta get that, <laughs> that thing going. Dreading aging is a waste of a wonderful life. It's not about age, it's about attitude. And then my all-time favorite, Mark Twain. Aging is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Right? Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Okay, so now on to my three amazing, no longer amazing secrets of what to do about aging. And now I'm just going to push it. <laughs> Whew. They didn't tell me I was going to have to be technologically advanced here. Okay, so the first one is change. I'm a great believer in, okay, th what are the two or three things I can take away from this? So today I'd like to just focus on three things. The first one is change. And when I talk about change, I mean, what am I going to do to change? I'm not talking about, you know, I've had enough psychotherapy and analysis to have a PhD in it. And the, I've learned that there's nothing I can do to change you. I've got to change me. So one of the things that I think we can take away from this today is how do we change our thinking about aging? Because we have our own biases, our own ageisms, if you will. And I think the first thing we can do before we ask the Texas legislature or before we ask the Congress or the City Hall or whoever to change is how do we look at it. Let me tell you a little story. My friend Rob, are you still in the room from ARP? Is he still here? Did he leave? Well, darn, I listened to him, st him talk all day. <laughs> Where are you? Okay, well, hi Rob, how are you? I told him that ARP was one of my favorite organizations and the reason why. I, when I turned 50, and that's been 13 years ago, I am standing here proudly as a 63-year-old man, but when I turned 50, it was a big, big deal. You know, 50, that's halfway to 100. Some people don't live to be, you know, 50, so you'd be lucky. But I was living in Washington, D.C. at the time, and I'd just come off the tennis courts on my 50th birthday, where I just waxed this 22-year-old stud muffin in tennis. And I was just so pumped up because I was like, yes, just beat his socks off. I go, I'm walking away back to my apartment, hot, sweaty, victorious. I go to my mailbox, and there is my welcome to ARP package. <laughs> ah! I was like, son of a gun, couldn't you wait at least two weeks? I mean, it's the day of my birth, 50. Welcome to ARP. And from that, I was like, oh, no, I'm a geezer. Oh, no, I'm officially there. And now, 13 years later, you can't get me. I mean, if I go to a movie, I am there about the discount. <laughs> if I go to a restaurant, I am checking out which ones will give me 10% off. You know? But that change has got, to, has got to come. And when I change is when you and I can change together. 
but if I don't change and I still am ashamed of being old or if I'm afraid of being old, then there's some work I got to do, okay? So now I'm going to punch it again, I think. Is it time to punch it again? Oops. Change. change. Yeah, well, change again. I did it. Yeah. Yeah, ho, ho. Connect. Connect. Did I say it right? No, y'all are laughing at this or me? Okay, connect. I'm feeling good about this technology. Y'all can't tell. So connect. First of all, you got to change, and then I think you got to get connected. You got to connect to the world. And I've heard this, again, this is nothing amazing no longer as of today, because you've been talking about it. I've heard it in the sessions I've been in and out of. You've been connecting. You got to connect to organizations. You got to connect to churches. You got to connect with each other. My favorite connection story I have a 95 year old neighbor who has a 90 year old friend who has a 99 year old friend. And they have dinner, and they all are still living separate lives. One is still driving. The other two decided they didn't need to be driving. Thank God. But they still get together for dinner. And when they invite me over, I am like the spring chicken. And it makes me feel so good. One time they invited me over to fix their air conditioning. Now, folks, I can barely push a button to get connect. So I walked in and said, well, here's the thermostat. And I jiggled it a couple times. And she said, no, we've already done that. And I went... I don't know what else you can do. And she said, thank God you're cute because you're useless otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Those three have taught me the value of connecting. You've got a connection here that you've made today. Look at the people that you didn't know when you walked in here or that you knew and you know better. Folks, in order to do this right, in terms of the coalition's work and for our work, we've got to connect and we've got to keep connected, okay? Third, contribute. And no, this isn't about your money, although I will ask for your money in a few minutes. But this is also about contributing. Get off the bench, folks, get in the game. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be the quarterback, you don't have to be the all-star, but you have to get off the bench. Get in the game. If you're not involved with some movement, and we've heard about, about being an activist forever, you got to contribute because, after all, you get what you give, right? You get back what you give. I think it's called reap what you sow. Is it sow what you reap? It's reap what you sow, right? Thank you. Southern Baptist, I forgot it. Uh, you got to get involved. And so what I would say to you is today, on page 45 of your little booklet, it's actually not numbered, but I counted it, it's in between advertisings. There's a whole, there's three or four lists, there's three or four things that you could do to contribute. Get involved in our Legislative and Policy Action Committee, which I happen to be co-chair of. We're going to have an established network of advocates calling the Texas legislature, writing and emailing this session coming up on all the GLBT and aging issues that we need to be involved in. So you contribute that way. You can contribute by getting involved in some other organization. If it's not CFA, if it's not GALA, get off the bench and get in the game, okay? And finally, you can contribute to us financially today if you want to. The money that you give today is going to go to the next summit that is in November in Tarrant County that my friend and colleague Kathy Bowser is, is leading. So anything you want to do today to the coalition, you're welcome to. But the financials, I don't think, is as important as your personal contributions. So somehow, go away today, changed a little bit, a little bit more connected, and then be willing to contribute a little bit more than what we did when we walked in. And those are my three no longer amazing secrets about what to do with aging. Precious, wonderful, darling, Mike McKay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are down to the final wire. I hope that you have loved being together as much as I have loved being with you. We are going to end where we started with our founder and chairman of the board, Mr. Cannon Flowers. Thank you all. We committed to get you out by two, and we're going to do just that. 
I have to thank several people. Um, when you go to events like this, you wonder how they all come together. We have spent the last three months of intense labor to make today happen. I would first like to recognize any of the board for the Coalition for Aging LGBT. If you'll please stand, our board members. Thank you so much. The organizing committee, I want you to pay attention, is on page four in your book. These people have worked uh, an incredible number of hours every Monday evening for weeks to work out every detail. The volunteers that you see in the pink shirts, all of that, it, it, there's, there's no way you could actually find so many wonderful people without partnering with such a great organization as GALA. We're proud to do this with GALA. Now, I would like Donetta Miller to stand up. Donetta is chair of this event. And, <laughs> and I, f f for, I have known Donetta Miller for 20 years, but I never knew her this way. <laughs> <laughs> detail, detail, detail. So. Thank you, Donetta. We're forever grateful for our second summit on aging. We will move on to Tarrant County. Kathy Bowser is our Tarrant County organizing chair. Uh, and we will, November 12th, hope to see you again. Uh, stay in touch with us, cfa.lgbt. I hope you will check in today on your social media with the hashtag I am relevant. And we must keep the conversation going. Thank you all very much for being with us today.